Um, my name is Annex. Um, there's not so much to tell about me. I'm uh, not formally, uh, not professional security researcher or something. I'm just a dude. Um, and I was kind of uh, forced to do this talk by a good friend of mine who has been asking me for like a decade to uh, visit uh, <laughs> one of the events he attends. He basically attends every event. I don't. So um, this talk is basically exclusively for him, but it's also for you as well. So uh, have fun. Um, Maybe it's a good idea to start off with, with a few questions, um, as so many do. Um, it's a question that has been asked quite, uh, quite a lot in talks, I guess. So how many of you have a Wi-Fi router? Uh -huh. That's, that's some, some people. It's, it's not as much as I expected. So how many of you have a smartphone? That's more. <laughs> How many of you trust your Wi-Fi router? That's not many. <laughs> How many of you trust your smartphone? All right. Actually, that's uh, pretty uh, encouraging, uh, at least for me. Uh, because it shows you're, ac uh, you're, you're actually skeptical of uh, security issues, I guess, um, on those devices. Um, I'm afraid many people are not, and that's why uh, the first topic I'm going to talk about is Wi-Fi routers. Um, I guess I'm going to tell you, uh, don't, uh, I'm not going to tell you a whole new story here. So, um, Wi-Fi routers can be safe, they can be fun, they can be um, great for surfing wirelessly, primarily. Um, but they can also be a menace, especially uh, if you have default passwords set up that are pretty much easy to guess or even plain readable. So uh, there's been a lot of talk about this. There's um, like five to seven common models uh, here in Germany alone that you can basically have a script, calculate the, defa the, the default password for, and um, just have free Wi-Fi, right? And um, it's, of course, it's not that simple. Uh, people may change their passwords. Some routers have default passwords that we just did not reverse engineer it yet, I guess. Um, some seem to be safe uh, over the course of time, um, but in, um, in, in general, uh, you could say that there's a lot of models out there that um, have insecure default passwords and are still in use. So if you um, go along in LA, here in Germany, you will find like 50 boxes and maybe 30 of them still have their default password. They still have the default password on the admin uh, page as well. So you could actually change things. And for some people that may be cool, um, if you happen to, um, you know, be out of bandwidth for your, uh, for your cell phone, um, there's free Wi-Fi, right? But uh, it's uh, also a problem if you have grandparents or maybe your parents even don't change that, uh, that password. Um, you're going to be fucked basically by just entering the network um, kind of drive by. So that's a problem. Totally forgot to think about your parents. <laughs> And even worse, um, that's not the end to uh, the, the menace of Wi-Fi routers. Usually a Wi-Fi router is, um, if it's Linux-based, is a system of a chip chipset um, that is usually produced by huge companies, something, a company like Broadcom or something, and they give you a development kit with it, they have a nice demo board, and um, other companies come and get this development kit and uh, kind of make their products and um, put them out there. Um, the trouble is they don't make updates for, the, uh, for those machines. So um, it's not, even, uh, not only that uh, you can access a wide range of networks, you could possibly um, 
do whatever you want with those networks, like have uh, uh, ports forwarded to you or lock the owner out or something. Um, but uh, they're actually running old software in many cases. And um, so, <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just forgetting to, uh, to skip through here. Please uh, forgive me because I didn't have time to prepare this so much. <laughs> Oh no. So um, there's reasons for this. Um, I basically um, mentioned one of them. Um, you have those chip producers. They basically uh, do the initial part of the software, give you a development kit, and uh, the companies making the final product are basically rebranding them. They make their fixes, they make their changes, probably add a gizmo or two maybe. Um, but they are um, they are not the masters of, of of their code. They basically depend on the uh, chip developer to uh, to give them updates. They could sometimes they, uh, they sometimes they do patches if you have a good uh, vendor like uh, I don't know. I, I wouldn't call D-Link good, but they make updates if something breaks. You can download an update from their page. And um, so even if there are updates, many people don't know that they are important, many people don't know that they could be installed, and many people know they uh, uh, don't know um, that, that it's a problem at all. So, um, there are some reasons out there, many uh, uh, vendors claim that it's just too expensive to have regular updates and they will only move it if it's really, 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 really dangerous and uh, an update is needed to prevent like total mayhem. Um, but actually, they won't even do that. <laughs> so, there are reasons. They're just not convincing. So, um, those systems are Linux, right? So, uh, let's, let's just fix all those systems. Well, first of all, Linux isn't Linux. Um, it's, it's a sad but hard truth uh, that I had, had to learn. I did a lot of embedded development myself, trying to uh, modify those systems, trying to get them to uh, do my bidding. And uh, what I learned is um, even if the source code, for example, for the kernel is available, you might be locked out of the bootloader, so you can just install a new kernel. You just, it just ends there. Um, and you, you have to resort to like um, accessing the hardware, disassembling uh, uh, the, the, the bootloader to find, to find some way to uh, work your way around the signature and to update uh, the router in the end. I'm sorry, I, I'm getting a bit too technical. Um, so, coming um, uh, with that, uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, Linux not being lin uh, Linux um, is, is best imagined if you have like a desktop computer and um, the full experience you ch it should be like you can build a new kernel, you can uh, make all devices run somehow by uh, getting your device drivers right, compiling some kernel modules, sometimes even more exotic kernel modules that will um, uh, sometimes even be pro uh, pro uh, proprietary, <laughs> sorry. Um, and um, yeah, so after all, it's really messy. You don't, you don't really want to do that without proper support. Um, you would like to have the dev kit, for example, from the chip vendor. That would totally help. But usually you don't get to that. There's a contract you have to sign. Usually you have to pay a lot of money um, to uh, get access to those th things. And if you're not in education or something, you can basically forget that. I'm independent. I don't have uh, any university back, uh, backing me, so I wouldn't get the nice stuff. So that annoys me. It's really messy. And... Um, Nobody wants to do that. Actually, there's people ha ha you, you, who, who love reverse engineering stuff, people who love uh, finding things out, but this is a, 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 a multiplication problem. You, have, you don't have just one router 
out there. You have like hundreds of them, hundreds of models. And um, if you have fun disassembling like one bootloader, maybe the second won't be funny anymore. Maybe the third uh, will be really annoying. And maybe the fourth uh, you won't do uh, at all. So um, after all, uh, we, we need some way around that. It would be nice if we just got the complete sources for every uh, distribution that's out there, not just the kernel sources, but also the sources to their web front ends they use or uh, the VPN solutions that are installed and stuff. And um, it would be nice, so um, I would say give us all your code, but I'm just saying that, no, but nothing will happen. So, so um, next up is smartphones. You, uh, you can see I'm uh, skipping over it because um, in the course of the, the development of this talk, something changed. Um, I ca my point was kind of made by somebody. Um, so, we're go not going to talk about Apples and Microsofts today because that would be too easy, right? It's just just doesn't, does, doesn't make sense to bash them. So, Android is Linux too, right? But it has the same problem somehow. So in the Android world, you have chipset vendors. People like Broadcom, again, or MediaTek. Um, there's a lot more. And if you're not Samsung or like Google, you don't control the complete chain of uh, uh, creating this product. So you usually have a chipset vendor, and if you're a chipset vendor, um, you, uh, you basically put together such a system where um, you have a system, of a, uh, a system on a chip, you have um, some fancy gizmos attached to it, and uh, you basically uh, put it all together in a nice package and says, uh, 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 tell people uh, this is the new generation of uh, smartphone technology. Um, usually this ends up in a demo board with some vanilla Android attached to it. So now you have to b find someone who wants to be Samsung. Of course, that's easy. There's literally hundreds of companies out there trying to do this. And um, those companies would be the product vendor. Um, I have, for example, I have a device from um, Vico. It's a French company doing exact, the exact same, uh, same thing. And um, they basically make a nice design you know, with shiny 3D animations and gloss on it and stuff. <laughs> and uh, they figure out to, uh, how to pack uh, the PCB, the battery, and everything into, uh, into that device. And um, they basically uh, will prepare a campaign for that, launch the product, and then, of course, money. And um, that's how far they think. Um, usually, this goes on for like a year or something, and then something bad happens. Um, for example, like an exploit could be a bug that just crashes the device and bricks it or something. But uh, let, in our case, let's assume it's an exploit. So, usually, Google would assess the exploit, would really deeply uh, look into it, or Samsung, it's not just, not just Google, um, a serious company <laughs> would look into that exploit, devise a fix, um, fix the bug, make a nice package and pu pu push it out to the users and uh, bug them to basically install it because it's so important, it's an update, you have to do it. Um, and then there's how many other vendors do it. So this is a huge problem. <laughs> they, do, they, they don't do anything. They just sit it out and um, hope nothing will happen. They hope nothing will happen. So let me tell you the story of my weekend. Um, on Wednesday, I, I believe it was Wednesday, 
good friend called me and he said, well, I'm going to Easter Hag and, you know, we have, we have a problem. There's two workshops uh, where the people couldn't come and couldn't you come over and, like, do something? And I was like, oh, um, a workshop? No, I can't do a workshop. Maybe I can do a talk. What's, what's the furthest, furthest away day I can do something? And he said, yeah, well, Monday... Um, I had a little idea talking about the lack of software updates on Android and on Wi-Fi routers. And um, I was kind of joking uh, with him, and, uh, saying, yeah, well, the really good example to show how big a problem that is would, something, would be something like kernel-level remote code execution. But when does that ever happen? Like, when you can reach it? So... I don't know, out of uh, a guess or a, 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 a hunch, um, I just googled that phrase. And a um, few days earlier, as it happens, there was uh, an exploit was made public. So you can see it was uh, actually found in 2016. That's the uh, name and the description. Uh, a, a researcher that found the, the exploit. Um, and what it basically does is um, own your PC remotely with full powers. You're not root, you're beyond root. You define what root is, your kernel level. Um, and it's actually pretty easy to write exploit for this because you can link against Calif Seek uh, 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 directly, but um, it's out of scope. So, <clears throat> what about this bug? It's um, something you should be earnest about. That's why I had the word play with uh, Ernest and Kernels. It's um, Oscar Wilde novel. You don't have to get that. But it's serious, it's earnest, it's severe. It's pretty bad. It's really bad. So, but... Everything needs a context, and uh, even this exploit uh, is not almighty. Uh, turns out it just refers to um, the receive from, uh, receive message function. I don't know why I wrote receive from. It's basically the same. It gets linked in glibc to the syscall receive message. Um, concerning UDP used with the message peak flag. That sounds very technical. Basically, uh, what you want, uh, what this does, and it's a totally legit use of code. I have to stress that, and I will stress this multiple times because names will show up, and you will hate those names. And no, it's it's it's, it's all cool. You can do that, and uh, the bug is on the kernel side. Every software I will uh, 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 tell you about from here on uh, is perfectly innocent. The kernel, is, uh, the kernel was, was the problem, actually. As you can see, the current kernel version is something around 4.10 or maybe 4.11 already, I don't know. Um, this was 4.5. Still a pretty recent kernel. Many stable re releases have not yet made it this far. <laughs> so um, what you can definitely say is that no Android device has uh, such a recent kernel. And what you can definitely say is that uh, probably no Wi-Fi wi router out there has such a kernel. And um, so maybe to clarify the context, we have to clarify what UDP is. Maybe not everybody knows that. Let's rehash. Um, it's TCP sister protocol. TCP is basically a stream-based protoco protocol. Um, you have uh, two two-way uh, uh, connection and you can write to the other side, you can read to the other side, the order will not be changed and it will be guaranteed to de be delivered if possible. Um, UDP, on the other hand, is a packet-based uh, protocol, so um, you, you have no guarantee over the order, you have no guarantee over um, uh, the arrival of messages, you have no guarantee at all. Uh, you m might get an error back. You might. So, um, it's lighter than TCP. That's one uh, of the main reasons we have it. It's very versatile. You can basically build TCP on top of it or some other protocol. 
um, and uh, it's used in some pretty, pretty, pretty important parts of the internet, like uh, DNS, that gives you google.com or any other domain <laughs> you could possibly want. And uh, it's also used in DHCP, which uh, is the protocol giving you your IP address when you um, enter a Wi-Fi network or some other network that has uh, automatic address distri uh, distribution. So um, those are pretty core. Those happen to be everywhere, those, uh, those two protocols. It is also used to penetrate network address translation, um, which is um, a measure uh, or a technique your Wi-Fi router and other routers will use um, to make multiple users um, uh, use one connection, basically. I will explain this in detail. Now... Um, well, not really, <laughs> as it turns out. Uh, the reason we have IPv4 is that, uh, uh, the reason we have not is that IPv4 is uh, running out of addresses. And we have a replacement, uh, UDP, uh, what the fuck am I? <clears throat> we have a replacement, that's IPv6, and um, uh, that, that one is not coming along very well. It's, it's getting better. It's, it's, it's being implemented here and there. Um, but um, not everyone has it. And uh, many people just uh, still just get an IPv4 address to um, use the internet with. And that's why we have NAT. Um, so basically, if you have... Uh, a computer here and a computer there, the NAT will um, note and uh, 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 remember which computer wanted to talk with, uh, uh, with which site on the internet and uh, when the response comes, redirect it to the correct computer, to the uh, uh, computer that actually made the request. So, that's NUT. The industry t uh, tends to tell us that NUT is a security uh, Technique. It is not just like virtualization is not a sec security uh, technique. You should really not trust any machine uh, that runs one thing uh, to be completely disconnected from the other thing. Uh, there's always ways around it, and uh, CPUs have caches. Um, so. It's wrong that NAT is a security technology, but right now it may be actually be the sad truth. At least till we know more. Why am I saying that? Because the situation with this ex uh, exploit is, is pretty, pretty, pretty complex and pretty vast. It could be the end, but um, I'm pretty sure it won't be the uh, will not be the end. Um, uh, but it's probably going to uh, raise some eyebrows here and there and make people pretty nervous. Maybe even make someone release an update who hasn't released an update in 10 years. I don't know. So what we have to find out is um, which software is affected. Um, and th this, is, this is crazy because you, usually you, you, you would do the, other, uh, the reverse thing. You would um, see which software has a bug. Um, but this time we have to look uh, for software that doesn't have a bug. We have to look for software that uses totally legit code on a broken kernel and will therefore forsake your system and your whole security. And uh, that was uh, uh, pretty adventurous, I can tell you, the past few days. I didn't have that much time uh, to do it in detail, um, but I was so... I was so shocked that I kind of uh, decided to make this the bigger part of the talk. I was actually just going to reference it as, um, you know, here's one perfect example why you should update your operating systems even on embedded devices, even on your Wi-Fi router. So, um, IPv6 is affected as well. That is another way to get around your NAT. If you are so lucky to already have IPv6. Many uh, ISPs have not yet found out how to configure a firewall um, for IPv6. They just have IPv4 rules. It's uh, pretty devastating. 
So this could be a problem as well, but I didn't look too deep into it. Um, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it won't. <laughs> so um, if you are on this Wi-Fi right now, you won't have NAT anyways. If you're on on, on like the local Wi-Fi with uh, your cell phone, your firewall won't help you. Uh, there will be no NAT around you. Um, if somebody could exploit that bug, and you would, you would have some software running that is um, prone to this attack. Um, bye bye. So, are you really sure? Nobody in this room has Skynet already. I have Skynet. <laughs> so. What software would really do that? Message peak is um, a flag that makes the kernel give you the next packet. In this case, uh, could be the next few bytes on another protocol. But in this case, it will give you the next packet without deleting it. So you can just take a peek. Is there something interesting for me? And if there's nothing interesting, you can just go on with your life. If there's something interesting, you let the evil intruder become rude and just be done with it. So, keep in mind, using this combination is totally legit. It's, it's just an interface the kernel offers and the kernel broke. So even if you hear a few more popular names here, um, or if you, uh, uh, don't, don't curse the software I'm going to put up now. So, what, apps do actually use that call. I did a quick search, uh, downloaded all the Debian and Arch sources and uh, grabbed through them. I have a fast internet connection at home. <laughs> so, oh, that's actually too big. Just a sec. Sorry. Hey. So now everything is going. Now everything is going down. I don't know what happened. Um, okay, there's a lot of packets. I found like 800 packets um, when I when I started out just looking for message peak. So it's not that uncommon. Uh, famous uh, German re uh, security researcher said, "Ah, oh, well, that's not so uncommon. I I can't cite any case." Um, he was shown a few cases uh, in the ensuing hours. Um, so there's loads of, of programs that possibly could expose this bug. Um, the art is finding out which uh, programs really um, have this bug. So the first thing that came into my mind when I read UDP was the, D, uh, the DNS protocol, because it's the most core, most essential protocol of the internet. The internet wouldn't work that the way we know it without it. Um, so, um, in this case, you had to check like core libraries, the glibc library, for example, um, how they handle DNS requests, how they ask the server and wait for the answer, because that's the point where the exploit could actually be used. And uh, turns out there's no danger here, no apparent danger here. <laughs> let's let's say um, a bit uh, uh, distance. Um, Fefe checked glibc, dietlibc, and djb. I checked bionic to be safe. Um, it's a derivative of other libs, so it was pretty uh, uh, improbable that uh, they actually added something like that. But I wanted to be on the safe side, and it doesn't look uh, like uh, DNS would be affected anywhere. Because I'm a script kitty and use Node.js, I also check libuv um, because it's used almost everywhere for, for event management and a lot of stuff, but it looks safe to me. So that's the good news. Um, in, in more good news, um, people speculated that systemd would be affected, which is um, a system it's, 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 we have a good German word uh, for it. It's called Eierlegende Wollmilchsau. 
Um, it's basically the application that brings up your system, checks the time. Um, if you have a service here, they, it, can, it, it can totally receive a package, start the service, pass on uh, the message, uh, just like INET uh, D, uh, was doing a few decades ago. <laughs> no. Um, so um, it's 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 very popular. Many distributions use it. Debian has it as default. If that would be um, uh, if that would be exploitable, we, we all would be fucked. So there was one line over there. It said receive message peak if peak if the peak variable was was set. Um, fortunately. I checked which file descriptor uh, type it was um, calling, and it, is a net, it was a netlink socket. It's not UDP. The kernel should, if the kernel was not uh, again in error, the kernel should totally call the write receive message or receive from function, not the UDP function. So, phew, that was close. So, let's get over to the bad news. <laughs> What's probably affected is anything local, of course. It's a remote exploit uh, that goes to kernel level. Um, you usually have software locally that would expose that exploit. I uh, looked into a few things I could think of. Uh, any Netcat version has it. Netcat is a, a program to just pipe network streams here and there. Um, it's like a Swiss army knife of networking and um, it's probably affected just as Nmap, very important security researcher tool, uh, etc. There's uh, e even OpenSSH is uh, a netcat implementation. If you don't have a netcat, OpenSSL, uh, OpenSSH will give you this version. Even it uh, seems to be affected. And keep in mind, it's not affected as in it does something wrong, it's affected as in the kernel will harm it if it does that call. So, Busybox could be, there's one case uh, where, it's, uh, where I'm pretty sure UDP um, sockets couldn't add, it could end up being called with this uh, message peak flag. Um, there's also an INETD implementation, but I think that's a control port. I didn't have time to check it in depth because it was really confusing in that file. Busybox is, uh, I don't know, it, it's, it's pretty clean, but it can be, can be disturbing sometimes. So, um, what's really a problem is DTLS. Um, if you know TLS or heard of SSL, it's what usually makes your internet, your browser connection safe safe. Um, DTLS is uh, the version for datagram-based protocols and it's basically used by banks to trade a lot. So um, it's kind of an important protocol um, and uh, no, not many people actually know it outside of the realms where it's used but uh, it exists and it has been used for some jobs uh, quite extensively. I really hope those people are aware of it because I checked some implementations. This is just, don't, don't be angry at OpenSSL again. It didn't do anything wrong <laughs> this time. <laughs> um, so DTLS seems to be affected and that could be a really, a really big problem. Although uh, the markets didn't crash as far as I, as far as I know, I hope my talking about will, uh, about it will not change that, <laughs> and um, yeah. So let's come to really, really, really bad part. Um, most of the Wi-Fi routers out there, based on Linux, will have um, some kind of embedded Linux low, um, size, uh, 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 low size system, basically being based on BusyBox or um, some, some um, lightweight tools that they can use to uh, do stuff other systems do with hundreds of megabytes in, let's say, four. So I looked uh, into uh, DNS mask because it was speculated it would be vulnerable too. Turns out it is vulnerable. Um, so, as far as I checked, I, I, you don't 
please don't take this uh, as, as a, an absolute verdict because, as I said, I, I didn't get to check everything very deeply. I couldn't uh, do a, a, like a live exploitation test on it because it just didn't work and uh, I had to abort the test in order to write the rest. So, um, VPN software is also um, probably if affected, but um, only if it uses, uh, for example, uh, the, the, the Ike program. I found some, uh, some, some suspicious uh, lines in there as well. But the really bad thing is uh, DHCP because it's going to be used. We can be sure it's going to be used. The rest is basically uh, would be bonus. So your Wi-Fi router is probably affected. If your provider doesn't force upgrade it, or the vendor gives you an update, you're basically only protected by your NAT. So think about whom you let into your Wi-Fi, <laughs> uh, if it's actually the case. And that should be verified. Uh, I, I, I really don't want to have a final verdict on that yet, but it's UDP, it's used with that flag, and uh, it seems pretty bad. So. Also, virtually all cheap Android devices. And that's why um, I explained uh, the, the whole um, um, food chain of Android earlier. Um, somewhere in this f uh, food chain, um, people will just try sitting it out, probably don't make an update, and that's why um, this vulnerability um, can even be, probably even be exploited in 10 years if somebody happens to have like a cheap Chinese Android phone that is going to run in 10 years. So um, I, uh, this, this also, also shows another problem we cannot control because it's not open source. There's a lot of voice over IP software out there and video software out there like Facebook, um, uh, Skype and stuff. Uh, we can't look into their source code. Of course, they have external audits. But in this case, we would actually have to uh, see if they use the syscall on the binary. It's possible. Uh, I just didn't want to download Skype right now um, to check it, um, but this should be checked as well. And uh, I obviously didn't do it, but uh, the, the essential thing is voice over IP protocols use UDP to break through your firewall to, uh, to enable direct communication between the video chat partners. So it's probably gonna happen and um, they're probably affected uh, without knowing it yet. Um, the hotspot function on Android uses DNS mask as well because it's just, it's a very nice program. I use it myself to just set something up quickly. I hate the config file and I hate the config syntax, but everything else it does quite good. <laughs> and finally, um, this is basically the core problem of this. Somebody at some point in the future could like give you an app that is totally legit using this syscall. You just don't have a, a kernel that was patched against this bug that was fixed, and uh, he could just use this bug. And of course, it's Android. You have to press uh, press OK. I grant this app um, every uh, network access it wants, but uh, that's the kind of uh, kind of click almost everyone does, even, even I do, because, uh, you know, I'm paranoid, but uh, that's a pretty f standard request. You want to talk to the internet, okay, do it. Um, so, Android does things to prepare stuff like that, uh, uh, to prevent stuff like that, but um, it, it could ultimately be exploited, and uh, it could basically happen to me if I don't, um, if I don't uh, see it coming. If, if, you know, in one year I will have forgotten about this, probably. <laughs> somebody will pass me an app and yeah, fuck them I. So let's come to the really scary part. Um, your internet service provider usually has a box at the side of the street, cell phone tower, I don't know. Those are usually big Wi-Fi routers or big routers, usually running Linux, usually needing some kind of authentication. And because Providers are the kind of people who want to pay nothing and take money for that. 
um, and uh, basically complain how uh, expensive noth nothing is, they use uh, free radios. It's a radius implementation. Radius is a TCP or UDP based protocol. Uh, UDP is pretty popular on radios. So I uh, looked into this and they are definitely using the right syscall, definitely using UDP sockets. If this setup would be running like this, they would just as you are um, would, would just be protected by their nuts and firewalls. Um, if they had direct exposure to the network, they could be exploited, possibly. Very possibly. If this whole thing works. I, you know, I, I, it could be an Easter egg. Maybe this exploit doesn't even exist. I mean, it's, just, it's like a wet dream, actually. <laughs> so, um, you really don't want to look into browsers. Um, it's it's just scary. I I, I uh, did a grab and I actually killed the grab because it was too scary. It's used in WebRTC. It's used in uh, d diverse uh, other protocols. Um, you, someone should really have a deep, 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 deep look in, uh, into that. So this is a, bro a rather broad scope. Um, every machine that cannot be patched. Your PC, for example, will possibly not even have it anymore because you updated at some point and you got a newer kernel and it's no problem anymore. Every server on the internet you can just update. There's, there's, that's no problem. So um, even if it's not SS, open SSH remote uh, uh, code execution, it is still pretty bad. It affects services that run by default and uh, that ran, run in pretty prominent places and exposed places. So this is certainly a bad wolf scenario, just to get the Doctor Who reference here. And uh, so you might be asking yourself, can we just fix it? And the answer is, it's already fixed. It was, it was, it w it was not even deliberately fixed. Somebody discovered this bug uh, in, in, uh, retrospectively. Uh, uh, this bug was fixed in 4.5 and he just discovered it last uh, uh, last year, end, end of last year when it was like 4.8 or 4.9 I don't know so, <laughs> this bug is already fixed, that's not the problem we can uh, if, if you can install a kernel yeah, but not everyone can do that and actually at this point I was going to show you how I would do it right now um, with my cell phone, my famous Vico cell phone, um, because they actually published uh, um, the kernel sources for my device, and I could just yet go into the kernel sources, apply a tiny patch um, that changes three lines, and I would be rid of the problem. Um, the whole action, if it worked, would take maybe about 10 minutes, flashing, rebooting, and stuff. Um, and most of the time I would be angry about my cell phone because it was slowing down the process. Um, but not everyone can do that as well. So we're in a bad situation right now. So this is, this is the patch actually. Oh, it's four lines, but okay. Maybe you can see what happened here, but it's it's hard without a context. It's a very context-based bug. It's hard to spot, and uh, so we can all speculate about the NSA putting it there. Maybe even Skynet. Uh, I wouldn't go so far. I would say the NSA is just enough. So we should still check this out. I, 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 as I said, I didn't do complete analysis of, uh, of this thing. I just um, went through the whole code base and saw what could be affected, how, how, how far could uh, the problem go. Something we call a threat assessment, but as it was not finished yet, <laughs> is, it, uh, is not finished yet, you can't even call it that. It's just a talk. It's just me talking. And um, please don't panic right now. Nevertheless, you should take this seriously. And if you can, we should fix what we can. Because um, as we know, in infection cases, it's, it's uh, um, always helpful to immunize as much 
uh, people as possible, so they can actually have some. We can actually have something like uh, herd immunity, and I think that is going to be a topic concerning this bug and probably other bugs that will follow, because uh, this was only a matter of time, and um, you, you you rarely get such a beautiful one, and. Um, of course, it wasn't the end of the world because um, if that would happen on TCP, we would be standing here. N nobody of you, you would be here anymore. North Korea would have taken over and uh, that would be the end of the world. We, we're, we're actually pretty lucky. It was just UDP. So we should um, make vendors release current kernel trees at least. And um, that's the thing that has been done. Uh, you can put legal pressure on them, you could uh, do public pressure on them. Um, the thing that counts is that we get the sources and the kernel, kernel tree, um, even if it's messy, would make me happy, but uh, we actually need... Uh, ah, it's, it's not there anymore. We actually need device, device drivers as well, because usually you may get a running kernel, you can even boot your device with a mainline kernel, like the top edge development kernel, um, but you won't get your baseband modem on the smartphone running, or you cannot use uh, your graphics card because it's, um, uh, it uses a, a blob, a, a piece of software that you uh, don't have the source code for, and you ha just have to talk to by a standard interface in order for it to talk to the graphics card for you. And this is a fairly uh, uh, popular problem. And um, so we want to drive us as well. And um, that's, that's one thing you can, uh, we can fix it. Also, we have to think about the uh, future. We, sh we should make more um, informed choices about the products we buy. And we should refuse having s hardware pushed onto us especially if it's not updated as well. So, conclusions. We need access to the kernel sources just to see what's going on. If they changed something, if, uh, if they didn't patch something, we need, need to be able to see that because it's pretty hard reversing that. And um, usually I'd say everything is possible. If it's just one incident, you can go miles to get an information. Um, but if you have, it, have to do it in like a hundred million cases uh, for hundreds of models of, of smartphones and Wi-Fi routers, this is not going to be fun. That's something we can do uh, distributed, but um, uh, it's not fun for most of the people. So we need the drivers, we want them to, and we want the bootloaders to be unlocked in order to take full control. Of course, Something needs to be uh, needs to change uh, uh, with the general situation, as I described. You can't have this whole uh, situation where um, uh, the information is kept back by a chip vendor hind hiding behind the product vendor, hiding behind the sales clerk uh, on your uh, hiding behind the uh, sales. Uh, what you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> it's been a long day, so. If you don't do that, those markets may collapse because you, uh, consumers may lose trust. And this is just the first bug of this kind. I'm not even sure if it actually works, as I said. I just try to present a colorful uh, 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 assessment of the possible threat, if that all works out. So um, consumers might be pretty uh, um, disappointed and uh, turn towards Apple or Microsoft and we can have that right so be aware winter is here so if you want you can ask some questions we have still a few minutes left maybe five minutes of questions if you have any I'll sit. Do you know if that is also usable as a local privilege escalation? So if yes. And there's millions of ways to do it locally. You could write the code yourself. Millions of ways. 
You were talking a lot about um, the problem uh, of devices, of embedded devices that don't get updates, um, in, with this bug in particular. Um, but isn't this problem, uh, isn't this a problem for every bug uh, with devices that aren't getting updated? And what makes this bug so special? Well, um, I actually wanted to spread awareness of, about devices not being updated with this talk. Um, I just came over this bug, and so the talk came more spe specific to this bug. Um, I actually would have uh, given you a broader scope uh, with Internet of Things of, uh, in it uh, and many other things, but uh, current events change that. <laughs> So I have another question. Um, what kind of network access is required to create such a UDP packet that triggers this bug? Is this an invalid uh, UDP packet or invalid IP packet or what needs to be done to exploit the bug? <laughs> um, so as I said, I never managed to reproduce the bug itself uh, because of short time. As far as I said, understand it, um, you can send basically a pretty standard uh, UDP packet. You just uh, have uh, to... Uh, trigger the, uh, the, the context in which the bug would be triggered and uh, for that um, I unfortunately uh, was lacking the expertise in time. <laughs> but uh, the bug is real, it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, um, it has a CVE number, it's rated 10 in every category. So I guess it is exploitable if it finds a text surface and that's what I was assessing. I just didn't go into that. If I had more time, I, I would have done that. I actually was hoping to uh, be able to demonstrate something quickly, but never works. <laughs> uh, about your special device, um, there are still binary uh, modules in the kernel. Um, like uh, on my cell phone. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I have um, blobs for the baseband modem, and I have blobs for the uh, graphics card. And um, as I have seen it on all the embedded platforms I've worked on, um, uh, be it Raspberry Pi, be it uh, more router-specific chipsets with lower power, um, they all have kind of this problem. They will all uh, require. Um, Propri uh, proprietary software at some point. Although the Raspberry Pi has been uh, pretty uh, unlocked uh, very far. So um, the whole Raspberry Pi experience is, is a, in my opinion, is about unlocking the NDA cla clauses uh, on, the hard, uh, on the hardware and getting the information to write open source drivers and the Pi is the furthest one, I guess. Uh, you can always buy Google Nexus and stuff uh, something. You won't get um, you won't get a, a binary blob free hardware, um, but it will be better. You will have better uh, uh, support uh, through the code base, and it will just work. But uh, that's I guess that's not the f uh, phones most people can afford or want to have. Uh, so that's sad. <laughs> Maybe a bit more of a comment. Um, besides the uh, smartphone market and tablet market, there are some uh, silicon vendors for which produce stocks for which we now have uh, yeah, full mainline uh, kernel support, graphics support and video support. So on top of my mind, there's uh, the Freescale iMix 6, which has the AtomViv driver, which some colleagues of mine uh, worked on and are maintaining. And, yes, but, but and, the and there's also the, the, the Raspberry Pi where there w will be probably some good quality 3D acceleration in Mesa. Uh, you, you're making a very good point there. Everyone get a Pyra. <laughs> Everyone get a Pyra. That's one of the uh, possibilities to get such a platform. And it will actually rock if it's ever done. And I'm pretty confident it will be done. But yeah, it's, it's, so it's not as fast as current smartphone chips in any no, way? No, but, uh, but, but I actually but, don't require. Uh, yeah. Do we require like eight cores with uh, two, gigahertz, uh, two gigahertz each? I, I think most of us don't. Yeah. 
it, it's a trade-off. You have a fully open system, you have full control over the whole stack and you can fix bugs, so that's worth a lot more than fast graphics. You preach into the choir. <laughs> Are you afraid? You shouldn't be. <laughs> um, can you explain the bug if it's possible to understand easily? <laughs> um, okay, yeah. Uh, basically, the root of the bug was uh, uh, that um, the checksum, uh, a checksum that was calculated uh, uh, in a second level pass of a, 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 a logic, <laughs> a, check, a checksum was wrong. The first time it does the, re, uh, the right checksum and the second time this uh, check fails because something is gone already or has, uh, has been, has been uh, uh, um, has been excluded by logic, and um, that's that's what's actually this small patch fixes, and um, it's hard to explain because I I was actually sure what's happening and uh, what was happening, and then it didn't work when I tried to exploit it. So I'm totally confused now. You should probably ask somebody else <laughs> who's unbiased and. You know, uh, didn't try for like uh, uh, half an hour uh, to 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 get it working, and was 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 really disappointed because it didn't. So I think timing-wise, we're about through. We have like almost two, and I think it talk is afterwards. Okay. Thank you, and uh, uh, please, would you uh, have uh, a little applause for my friend Max here, who invited me, who made me come over here, who made me uh, make up this talk while I was eating cake with my sisters on Sunday. <laughs> He's the best. The very best. Thank you. <laughs>